All right, so I'm gonna start off with a little video here. We got a man on the street interview. This guy is asking this woman in England why she wants the immigrants to come into the country, illegal immigrants to come into the country. So let's see what she has to say. Is it anti-immigration or illegal immigration? What, what do you say? I don't think anybody's illegal. What? Of course not. It, this is so ridiculous. It, it, this is a semantics argument. So stupid. And you know what I'd say? Yeah, everybody's illegal, so shut up. I, I hear this a lot. What makes refugees not illegal? Because people aren't illegal. Of course, but when they come into the country without passports, what, what, can, we, what can you do about that? We can welcome them in. They're refugees, they're right. asylum seekers, they're fleeing right. persecution. Right. Uh-huh. Are you sure they're not just fleeing war? Are you sure they're not just trying to invade your country and take it over and spread their religion? You know what these, uh, a lot of these refugees, these so-called refugees would do to her, right? We've heard the stories. It's horrifying. And how do you feel about the taxpayer having to pay for that? The taxpayer doesn't pay for that. Um, answer the question. Okay. Apparently the taxpayer doesn't pay for illegal immigrants. That's what the, the woman... Yeah, so taxpayer doesn't pay for illegal immigration in England in spite of the fact that they're paying for their food and shelter, at the very least, they're paying for food and shelter for these people. I don't know what to tell you. It's pretty crazy that these people exist and can vote. These people, her, right here, is allowed to vote on policy that determines where your tax dollars go. And she's sitting there saying your tax dollars do not pay for illegal immigrants into England when they clearly go there. The Daily Mail. Family of asylum seekers who fled Syria for a safer life in the UK say they want to go back to war-torn country after a week of far-right riots. Oh, yeah. So if you're not aware, in England, the native population there, in other words, the white people, have just been going on a tear, standing up against Islam and Muslims in the country. Wonder why? Wonder why? Hmm. Could it be that this is a clash of cultures? And that they don't feel safe with the Muslims in the country. They don't feel like the Muslims fit into the country. They don't feel like the Muslims are um, good for their country in some way or in any way. I think that's probably why. I saw a report years ago. There was this Jewish man. He's, he lives in some Muslim country. And, you know, the children throw rocks at him because he's a Jew. So it's okay, you know, in their country supported in their country to be like, we don't like your culture. We don't like your religion. Get out. We're going to throw rocks at you. But when England does it, oh, it's bad. It's far-right extremists. Far-right rioters. Hmm. But the, we know about the Overton window and how far that has shifted to the left. So that anybody who's right of Nazi Germany is considered far-right these days. We're going to get into this article here. Now, before we do, I want to thank everybody for stopping by and supporting my channel. I do appreciate it. I appreciate even the people who hate watch this, even the people who disagree with me. And that's fine if you do, you're allowed to disagree with me, especially if you do so respectfully. That's encouraged because maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you could prove me wrong somehow. Now, uh, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure that you're still subscribed because YouTube does unsubscribe people every single day. You can find me on Rebel, Twitter, BitChute, and Odyssey. Let's get into this article. A Syrian refugee has said he and his family no longer feel safe in Belfast and wish they could return to their home country after far-right mobs attack their home. Muhammad Sofi Badur fled the civil war in Syria with his wife and two children three years ago and sought refuge in East Belfast at a hostel for asylum seekers. However, the 29-year-old who lives in a ground floor apartment at the hostel has been left terrified for his family's safety after far-right rioters launched a brick through his living room window. Let's take a look and see where Syria is on the map. Okay, so looking at the screen here, Syria is right here. It is north of Israel, south of Turkey. So England is like 1,500 miles away. Why didn't you just go to like a country that's agreeable to you and your religion? It's near Syria instead of going 1,500 miles away to get to England. Is it because you're refugees or is it because you're in an invading force? Hmm. It's a conundrum. I don't think I could figure this one out. Back to the article. Recalling the harrowing experience which took place on Wednesday night, Mr. Bador told the Irish Independent it has left his wife wanting to return to Syria. The father of two said, It is scary. We came here to be safe, but now we don't have anywhere to be safe. 
If I had a passport, okay, so why don't you have a passport? Is it because you threw your passport overboard because you didn't want to be identified? And so you could be a criminal from Syria coming into the United Kingdom. I don't know. I'm just speculating. Why don't you have a passport? That doesn't make any sense. I have a passport and I don't travel. If I were to leave the United States, I would definitely be taking my passport with me, even if I were a refugee. In fact, if I were single, I would be a refugee because dating situation in the United States is freaking stupid. I would change the country, okay? I want to leave Belfast, but where can we go? You can't change the country just because you have a passport. That doesn't make any sense. What do they want? Why? I don't have any friends here and people don't really even see me. My wife is very scared. She tells me she wants to go back to Syria. Syria is not safe. And now here is not safe. Mr. Bador, whose children are aged five and eight, said that he and his wife and kids slept in his car after the attack because they feared they were going to set fire to the house. I am scared for me, of course, but I'm scared for my family and the two children, and the two children were inside. Well, let's take a look here at some videos of Muslims in England. So here we go. Notice they're carrying clubs, screaming, running, up, running through the streets. Looks like they damaged that vid screen over there. Now the caption on this one was that they're hunting down white people, but there's a lot of white people around that they're not bothering. So I don't know what they're doing, but they are running through the streets with clubs. And they're saying that they also have knives, and if they have the knives, the knives are going to be smaller and harder to see. So they could very well have knives, and we would not notice. So you can see that they got sticks. So they're banging on the rail with. Come on, guys! What's up? Allah Akbar! I find it. Well, it looks like he might have a knife right here in his hand. Um, I find it to be troubling when they start screaming Allahu Akbar. And you might be thinking, well, that's prejudiced of you, anti woke warrior. Why would you feel like they're just saying Allah is great, right? All glory to Allah, whatever. However, you translate it, doesn't really matter. But if I went to, say, a Muslim country, a country that is run by Muslims, because a lot of these countries that are Islam, they have that in their politics. And I started screaming, and I had a group of, group of men with me with clubs and knives, and we started screaming, Jehovah is great, Jehovah is the greatest, whatever, all power to Jehovah. Whatever you want to say regarding a different religion that is not Islam, wouldn't you be a little bit concerned for your safety? And that's what I don't understand why these European countries want to bring in millions upon millions of Muslims. They're saying that London is 63% Muslim now, something like that. It's 63% foreigner. It's not English born anymore. That's millions of people. That's millions upon millions of people because London is a big city. Why would you want to displace your native population like that? That doesn't make any sense to me, especially with a population that wants to destroy everything that the West has, that your culture has, that your country has, and rebuild it in their own image, their own religion. Why would you want to do that? It doesn't make sense to me. Back to the article. It comes as violent far-right protests, which were sparked after false information about a Southport knife attack suspect were spread online, ravaged across the UK. Okay, so these protests that ravaged across the UK, which were sparked by false information, this is not true. Okay, let me explain the false information to you. So what they're saying, the false information is, is people are saying that this is not a native-born England, Englander, or Englishman. He's a young man. I think he was 17. I'm sorry, not all my facts are straight on this, but this part I know for sure. He is not English. They will say on the news, oh no, he was born in England. He's, he's English. Mm-hmm. He was born in England and he's English. Yep, that's how that works. No, his parents were not born in England. His parents are from a Muslim country and they raised him to be Muslim in a country it's not really welcoming to Islam, and that's going to run antithetical to the Islamic faith and their practices and what they preach. He's not a native Englander. Just because he was born there does not make him a native Englander uh, or um, Englishman, if you want to say it that way. Whatever you want to say. It's like me going to China 
with a Caucasian woman having a baby and saying this this kid's Chinese. They'd be like, mm, you're stupid. He's not Chinese. He's white. Anyway, <laughs> Belfast has seen some of the worst disorder with 22 people arrested in connection with the riots that have raged over several days. Notice those people were in connection with the riots. That doesn't mean they were actually doing anything. They were just there. Arrests were made on Wednesday night after bins were set on fire and houses attacked. Four men were charged yesterday of criminal damage, resisting police, rioting, and throwing a petrol bomb. A number of homes and cars were damaged in the Silver Stream Road, Sandy Row, and Upper Frank Street region of East Belfast. Here's a car that's been damaged. Hmm. There's a, a window that had a brick thrown through. It's probably the same window we saw up here. Is it the same one? No, it's different. Yeah, it's different. Definitely different. It looks like this window here might be shattered as well, but I can't tell. Speaking of his fears, going forward, Mr. Bador told the Irish Independent that he is scared for his children. When they go back to school due to their Muslim background, he added, we are scared about our kids getting bullied. My son is very scared because he has never seen anything like this before. Newsflash, you don't have to be Muslim. You can denounce the Muslim faith and be a different religion. People have been nice since we first came here, but last week and this week has been very bad for us. My kids will be starting school again this month, and maybe there will be problems there for Muslim children now. When police attended the hate crime incident, they advised the family to leave the area for the time being and suggested going to a hotel. Let's see what this uh, police lady has to say here. Those who are intent on causing disorder or committing offences will be brought to justice. Anyone contemplating getting involved needs to understand the consequences of their actions. We will use all lawful means and tactics at our disposal to gather evidence and arrest people involved in criminality. All right, so you can arrest people involved in criminality. What about this Muslim kid who stabbed? This is what he did. So the, 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 um, the false information, the fake news that they're saying, this guy who was a Muslim born in England to Muslim parents who immigrated from another country. That guy, what he did was he stabbed to death three children. And I think, I want to say he stabbed 11 children altogether and two adults. My numbers are not quite right there, but it was a lot more people that got injured by this guy. Did you arrest him? Did you hunt him down? Did you throw the book at him? Did you deport him? Did you deport his family? Did you do anything to him? No. Did you do anything? I, I'm sure that he's probably been arrested or something. But that's what this all is coming from. A Muslim ending the lives of young girls. And, oh, they were, they were bad because they weren't Muslim. Well, don't live in a Muslim country or don't live in a, a non-Muslim country then. Are you going to take on the whole world? Are you going to kill? Are you going to kill billions of people? Because there's billions of people who are not Muslim in the world. The Mr. Badar said police came and said I could go to, to a hotel if I had money or go to a friend's. We don't know anybody around here. I have money. That's okay. But it was one o'clock in the morning. Everywhere was closed. We would have had to pack up all of our clothes and I didn't know where we were going. This hostel is for refugees. There are families from Syria and Sudan living here and there is no security to protect us. Why would you have to pack all of your clothes to go to a hotel for a night? You don't have to pack all your clothes. You've seen a change of clothes. All right. So what did the, some of the comments say down here? Around the world, several countries now regard this country as unsafe. Will the UK set it? set a first by approving claims for asylum in an unsafe country to those arriving seeking safety? <laughs> yeah. Uh, this guy Trandor says, Syria is not a war-torn country. If we take a genuine people from countries affected by war or disasters, should they stay forever or until the country they came from is safe? I'm pretty sure that there's a civil war in Syria. It's been going on since 2011. So... But the fact of the matter is, is we cannot, uh, these are a clash, this is a clash of cultures. We have this image right here. A Muslim scholar says it's okay to rape non-Muslim women to humiliate them. And this is a woman scholar, a female. I found an article on this. It didn't find the same article that was captioned in that picture. Close this. Can I close this? Okay. This article is titled similarly. It's Islamic scholar says Allah allows Muslim men to rape non-Muslim women to humiliate them. So I watched a little video down here. It's translated. Where's the little video at? Uh, well, it was here. Now it looks like Ann Coulter saying something. But what she says, it's 
it was translated, I had to read the thing while I was playing, is you are allowed to do this. You're allowed to take slaves and you're allowed to take prisoners of war. Trophies. Because they wouldn't be prisoners of war necessarily, right? They're allowed to take any women from the country they invade because it's war. And they're allowed to take them as they would their wives. And she says the same thing about slaves. You're allowed to take slave girls and you know they're allowed to be there for sex. They're allowed to be in your home for sexual purposes. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff right there that you can unpack and a lot of stuff wrong with what she said. It's all just bad news. So think about that for your sister, your daughter, your mother, your aunts, your nieces, your cousins. Do you want that for them? Your friends? I don't want that for anybody. I don't want anybody to be in that position. But according to this woman here, her religion says it's okay. Ridiculous. So yeah, you know, if you go woke and you say white people are bad, straight people are bad, Christianity's bad, men are bad. Well, how do we fight against all those things? We bring in Islam. For some reason, Muslim men are bad. I don't understand why. They're men. The only thing is, is most of them aren't white, right? You're black, you're brown. You're okay, are they? I mean, because we've heard the rhetoric about patriarchy, toxic masculinity, black men are still men. So this does not fit their narrative. But I guess, I guess it's just that, man, those white men, they're just so bad. They're just the worst. They're so much worse than other types of men. That it's okay to um, allow men to invade the country to overthrow the white men that are, that are here. It's ridiculous. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.